In software programming, the front end is what you see on your screen. It might be a website or an app. The back end is what happens behind the scenes, like storing data, processing information, and making sure everything works smoothly. So in this video, we'll guide you through the essential steps, tools, and technologies that will empower you to build backend systems. I'll split the video into two parts. In the first part, we'll understand the technical concepts that you should be using or you should be familiar with as a backend engineer. In the second part, we'll explore the programming languages and frameworks that are involved in learning backend. Move your cursor to this time duration if you are coming here to learn just the programming part. Number one is understanding monolithic architecture. Enterprise applications are built in three parts. Number one, a database consisting of tables for storing information. Number two, a client user interface that can be your website or mobile app. Number three, a server side application which will handle all the HTTP requests and have the business logic. This is what makes a monolithic architecture monolithic. It is a single logical executable. As you see over here, I have my user interface which resembles a computer desktop and it tries to go to the server and the database which are enclosed in the monolithic architecture. Number two is scaling. Scalability in software development refers to designing solutions that continue to function efficiently along with growing number of users. For businesses, this means regardless of how big the business is, the software can still handle increased users. In scaling, we first see vertical scaling. Let's assume now we have a minimal user base for application. So there will be lot of incoming requests getting served by single server. As the traffic increases, responses start to be getting slower and then they will have minimum downtime. In order to have minimum downtime and not to have any other exhaustion of resources, vertical scaling does scale up, which means adding more power in the form of CPU, in the form of RAM to our server. The main advantages are it's cost effective, less complicated in maintenance and has got serious limitations. Let's talk about the limitations. Like you see, over here, there are different requests coming in to my single server. Now, if this single server fails or just goes vanishing, then probably all these users are now single-handedly responsible and they'll not get any kind of request or response back from the server. Number three is load balancer and horizontal scaling. A load balancer eventually distributes incoming traffic among web servers that are defined in a load balance. A load balancer acts like a traffic cop sitting in front of our servers and routing client requests across all the servers, capable of fulfilling those requests in manner that maximizes speed, capacity, and ensures no one server is overworked, which possibly could degrade the performance of any one server. This comes as horizontal scaling, referred to scale out, means adding additional nodes or machines to the infrastructure to cope new demands. Horizontal scaling is more desirable for large applications due to the limitations of vertical scaling. Few advantages are easier to scale, hardware perspective, fewer periods of downtime and increased performance. Like you notice, over here, there is web browsers and the load balancer is distributing the balance or the request into multiple servers. Even if one goes down, still there is another one who can cater to this request. Number four is database replication. Database replication is a technique used to create multiple copies of a database and keep them synchronized. This ensures data redundancy, high availability and improved performance. If one database becomes unavailable, the others continue to serve. And that's ensuring uninterrupted access to data. By distributing read operations across multiple databases, you can reduce the load on the primary database and improve query performance. Like you notice over here, the web servers are having a master DB. The master DB in fact has got three slaves which are replicating the data on the master. Hence, 
if the master is been written simultaneously the sleeves can be read and then it connects to the web server number 5 creating and writing web apis when a front end like website or app needs information and it sends the request to the api server then the api processes the request fetches the required data from the back end and sends it back to the front end back end developers should be aware of creating rest apis very well here are some of the most commonly used languages in back end development number 1 your javascript or node js originally designed for front end development javascript along with node js has become the popular choice for back end development as well as node js allows javascript to run on server side enabling full stack development with single language python known for its readability and simplicity python is widely used in back end development particularly in web applications data analysis artificial intelligence and scientific computing frameworks like django flask make python a powerful choice for web back end development java a long established language in the industry java is used in wide range of server side applications its platform independence robustness and extensive libraries have frameworks like spring and hibernate making it a solid choice for large scale applications coming next is c sharp developed by microsoft c sharp is often used in developing back end systems for windows platforms it's a part of the dotnet framework which provides a vast ecosystem for building various type of applications from web to game development ruby known for its elegant syntax it's particularly used with the rails and it offers all conventions and configuration approaches that speeds up development process it is one of the favorites among startups and its rapid development in numerous projects is contributing to a very large ruby on rails community php despite mixed opinions this community remains widely used it powers significant portion of the web including content management system like wordpress the choice of language often depends on specific needs of the project the existing technology stack and the expertise of the development team hence each language has its strengths and communities offering various frameworks and libraries to facilitate efficient backend development there you have it your road map to becoming a successful backend developer if you follow this plan and dedicate a few hours every day you can be ready to apply for entry level backend jobs in the next 12 months and if you want to speed up the learning process you can start learning directly from our coding x app wherein you get to know about programming languages frameworks database and much more check out the app link in the description box below happy coding